Today we are amidst the pre-session before the validity function, the seminar on the advancement of engineering, especially dealing with the construction engineering. Construction as per the Vedic definition is of four types. One is the inceptive or remedial construction. Second is the developmental construction. Third is qualitative construction and fourth is the effective construction. The inceptive construction of the world, it deals with the construction of the cosmos and construction of the living beings dealing with the cosmic and genetic evolution theories. First, the thing constructed was the plethora, an array of worlds, uncomfortable planetary kingdoms. That is cosmic evolution. Then starting from the basic unit of life, we have seen the construction of living beings and their advancement. That is genetic evolution. This is known as primitive construction. After it is being constructed, the inhabitation process of human beings that has resulted in the second construction, which is known as the civil engineering of the construction. <laughs> so the basic construction, when human beings, according to the science of human behavior, conflict and development, the science of anthropology, the science of human advancement in civilization, <coughs> that start with a person's need for a shelter, apart from food and other requisite for his survival, he tempted to have a shelter when the person is attacked by a multi-dimensional array of varieties of natural components like rain, cold, sun rays, etc. So it tempted the person to go for a shelter. Dwell in the inherent structures like caves, which has tempted in advancement of the person's caliber to start construction. So the cradle of engineering or construction is civil engineering. Before few decades, we only know the engineering of civil engineering because it is the engineering inceptibly, gross, materialistically conceived and conceptualized by civilians and it is a mark of the inceptive battle of civilization. So it is known as civil engineering. Then only in the basis of the various expansions of human caliber and their innovations, they went in marine engineering, aeronautical engineering, textile engineering, production engineering, instrumentation engineering. Now biomedical engineering is there, telecommunication engineering, information technology, then electrical and electronics. These are all the various expansions. But the mother of all engineering centers that deals with the, the process of making the abode, that is the civil engineering, that is the basic structure. The third thing is qualitative construction. Constructing the qualities, that is scientific temper, intellectual qualities, all of these qualities which are there to advance the mind of human being to result in productive intellectual expansion and exposure, that is the third thing, that is qualitative construction or qualitative construction engineering. And fourth is effective engineering to impart the values of religion, culture, ethics and morale. So a society is inceptively constructed by the God or the automatic process of creation. Second, the engineering is made by the construction of human beings for their abode and status. Third, by the qualitative construction of the learned derived members of the society. And fourth, the ethical construction of the effective construction of the society by the so-called descendants of a divinity, delegates of eternity and the other great worshipable scholars, sages and saints of our land. They have made the complete session of that engineering. So, we are in the second stage, second stage of construction, <coughs> the developmental construction. Each and everybody, you know that they have their own abode. The abode of a person is a house, and the abode of a family is a home, and the abode of God is a temple, and the abode of an elite person, a knight is a mansion, and the abode of various people, for their official existence is known as office and abode of multiple people that is known as a mansion and abode of a person in work is industrious in nature so it is an industry and starting from the, the abode of arms, armaments, ammunition and army that is naturally a forge and starting from that even that is an abode, a shelter for dog is a kennel, a shelter for the horse is stable so there are a lot of abodes so then the construction of abodes that were expanded 
the quality of construction, the durability of construction that also expanded. And moreover, in force of civilization, construction of not only domestic structures, but also socialized structures for multiple and mass usage, like dams, bridges, subways, tunnels, minings, highways, and lot of these constructions they came into existence, broadening, widening, and deepening the construction of engineering, the focus, scope, and hope of engineering, innovations, and applications. These various sciences, they have resulted in the form of construction. Construction means nirmana in construction. According to the celestial construction engineering by Vishwakarma and Maya, and also by our human as well as the divine principles of construction by Kashyapa, Atri, and various other things that have been propagated by the famous preceptors and promulgators of the construction engineering in Guru Samhita, Atri Samhita, Nirmana Shastra, Vastu Ratnagara, there were so many such treatises. Some divine in nature, celestial in nature, human in nature, social in nature, global in nature, lot of such construction sciences came into existence. <coughs> they famed with three basic materials. One is the supportive material, second is the binding material, and the third is the apparent or peripheral base of material. In Sanskrit, which is known as dharana, dharana, and dharana. So the supportive material stands, and the binding material that holds and the apparent material that beautifies and structuralizes it, that finalizes, finishes the structure. That binding material is always the essential material of the world. That's why it is said that the invention of concrete is one of the noblest and rarest inventions of the world. So that binding and material are the what we call bhakta, which is the same name adopted for husband also. He has bharanam kriyate anayanaiti bhakta, one who upholds, binds, Make the thing to withstand is known as bhatta, that is known as barana. So the concrete is the barana bhatta that binds the thing. That results in the identification and development in concrete procedures as per the Vedic scripture. These type of sciences in construction engineering that starts with ceramic engineering, material science, geopolymer science, then infrastructure management and technology, then geotechnical engineering going into the deep area of hazard mitigation technology and various other methods, substantiated methods also for construction, repair and restoration, non-destructive testing methods by elemental analysis, materials, structures and structural investigation of buildings and structures and dealing with not only repair and restoration but also the condition analysis and survey along with failure investigations. So, the modern trend of this engineering, starting from a small construction, has resulted in the blossoming of multitudes of faculties in the form of science systems and methodologies. In the basis of which concrete is to be analyzed, and in the era of concrete, that is the Varnavadartha, there are three eras, three ages. One is the hardcore concrete era. Now we are in the reinforcing concrete material era. Now we are getting into the third era, that is the modern concrete or alternative systems of concrete era, which is going to be the dawn of the construction engineering. To start with the, the historical period of the high core concrete era, we are now seeing a lot of buildings. We are seeing both of the things. We have we recently seen, apart from this, we used to say, apart from earthquake and oceanic quake, we have also the structure quake. Oceanic quake is the contribution of the oceanic imbalances and mass eruption or energy eruption and earthquake is nothing but the seismic eruption of unlimited mass of energy resulting in the total demolition of the massive structure. Apart from this oceanic and uh, earthquake, that is structure quake, which is the contribution of the fraudulence, negligence and ignorance of the construction authorities. Recently we have... No, no, I have told all the things. <laughs> So, we have recently seen lot of other constructive destructions. <laughs> recently, we have seen the major Pajamuta flyover structure quake. <laughs> recently, I don't people, they have witnessed it. So, these type of things we usually see in this world, wherein by recent construction, they could not withstand even a small jack and without any 
proper intimation or symptom, immediately it falls, especially on somebody's head. So this type of thing also we see on one side. On one side, we are seeing the elegant panorama of buildings which are totally escaping from the masticating teeth of the concept of time and ruin. We are seeing a lot of such structures like the St. Paul, St. Sophia, the Pantheons, the Cathedral, the pyramids, and massive structures of temples, dams and various things printed by even the British colonization, even by the Mughals, even by the great kings of our ancient dynasty. We are seeing a lot of, one second we are seeing a lot of buildings which stand in ruin and time over centuries. At the same time we are seeing some people, so-called advancement we are claiming, but we are seeing hundreds of buildings that withstood the reasonability of time and ruin far. And we are simultaneously envisioning in one side buildings which are just totally pulverized as if it is a sweet inside of our liquid mouth. So why there is a difference between <coughs> this type of a robustic sturdity in our ancestral constructions as well as this type of totally micro-pulverizable, totally imbecile <coughs> and futile constructions of the modern area <coughs> wherein may be time and most for advancement in technologies and applications. Why it is so? In this type of ancient constructions, we want to quote three things, the major invention of concrete in its uh, innovative stage, even in the antediluvian phases. The first is with the Roman invention of concrete. The first concrete was now according to the analysis of mineralogy and as per the recent spectrographic innovations through MAS, NMR, spectrography, the recent spectrographic method, by which they analyze the particles of the Roman constructions, which belongs to the second and third century AD, and they have recently discovered not only it possesses the materials which are just a low level common line precipitation of CO2, apart from which they have also identified a number of elements which are very much in par with excellence with the latest geopolymer elements. Very much, they are very much approximate in sturdy and in assembly with the modern equipments and elements. The first thing is the open signum, the testa, so called the testa, which is a ceramic material composition mixed with the light and which has the utmost sturdity. And the second thing is carbon. And third thing is very fantastically they have utilized such a stand by which they use the binding material with not a pit sand or the seashore sand which is used now. It is known as a Helena Fosicia, a sign of a volcanic eruption and remains that they have mixed in the composition by which the sturdity has been multi endorsed. So, this type of Roman concrete, most probably the primeval concrete utility of the history of mankind in construction, it has resulted in a very great analytical scrutiny of the modernists to go into the probe of making. A geomimetics like what they do in biomimetics, how to imitate these things and produce these things. And the famous geopolymer scientist and polymer chemist, Joseph Jevinotis, he made a research on the remains of Peru, the Huanca civilization of the ancient Peru. They have made a process by which they have dissolved the stones. Stones have been dissolved with extracts from plants. The hydroxylic acids that are being made inherently available in abundance in the plants in the forms of acetic acid, oxalic acid and citric acid, they have been extracted and they have been very much applied. Even in Chittana Vasana at Pudukotai and even in the Ajanta Loro Caves, they have used the plant extracts which are all the biological or botanical chemical equivalents instead of the chemical ones used now which withstood the ruins of nature and still shines as a mark of prestige and pride and advancement of painting technology. Likewise, this type of tenaciously impregnably fortified binding that is with the pasting in the external, the same thing gets inside the thing also, that is in the form of concrete binding used by the chemical extracts from plants. Even in the pre columbian civilization, they used to deal with plant extracts from potatoes, from mangoes in Nibera, and maize and other various things that they use as just normal edible crops. They extracted the essential acids and applied it for conglomeration of the segregates and aggregates of binding materials. 
And the third thing is now recently a debate is going in the civil engineering, that is in archaeometry, the science of archaeometry, there is a debate going whether the construction of pyramids is by the process of stone carving or by the process of stone molding or concrete molding. Recent, even though that is subjected to disputability, still it is on the way. But it has been proved that pyramids were constructed only by the process of concrete molding, coating four reasons. One, at the era, there was no possibility for utility of heavy metals like iron, etc. And copper was involved. How to carve such a vast number of stones with such a soft metal like copper and to establish the structure? Number one. Number two, if it is carved, then where is the waste material? And where are the fragments of the carved elements put? We cannot find even a small trace of it. And there is no stone in the nearby area also. That is also a thing. And fourth, there was no wheel invention at the time. And there was no probably the pulley invention also at the time. Transportation was a very great difficulty. And shaping is also very impossible in the size and structure of the stones that we see now. Shaping of the stones, if it is a stone carving, would be very difficult. So it has been molded. This is the vindication of uh, some research-oriented scholars from France in geopolymer chemistry. They have taken it for spectroscopic analysis and they have found out by means of <coughs> tracing and abundating that the structure is nothing but liquefied stone which is molded into concrete blocks. Apart from which we also have lot of structures and to differentiate, to be frank, to differentiate a stone structure well shaped as well as a structure which is liquefied and molded, it is very difficult and normal mineralogical innovation or insight is insufficient. We have also lot of constructions and the same things were also occurring, the same doubts are also occurring in our architecture. We have a great list of architecture starting from the Indus Valley civilization, the Mughal architecture, the Hindu, Buddhist and Jain architectures, then the Rashtrakuta architectures, Chalukya architecture, the great Vijayanagara architecture, Pallava architecture, Chola architecture, then fusion, the Gandhara arch of construction, European fusion, the, then Goan, modern Goan architecture, then the colonial architecture of the British, then French architecture, Dutch architecture. We have been uh, colonizing a lot of other fusions and individual systems of architecture in our country. No doubt we have a lot of things. Now to deal with, we are taking two problems. Now, to conclude in the valedictory section, I want to take, this is the historical representation of what we have in concrete and the basic studies of construction. We want to put two major questions. One, how to get into concrete? <coughs> Effectively. For example, while taking concrete, not only we must study about the advancement, we have to deal with all the other drawbacks also. Number one, if you take into concrete and construct Moles and moles of earth, more weightage to the surface of the earth. No doubt it is not going to be a weightage, but a total contribution over decades of years that will create geomass imbalance, <coughs> construction of dams in areas, and uh, irrelevantly, improportionately, mining by which exhaustion of the geomass is done. The exhaustion of geomass, emptification is done in mining, and overloading of mass in the, is uh, done in dam construction and bridges. In one side, you are strengthening and adding mass. One side, you are loosening the mass. That results in the change of tectonic plates, the debilitation of the peripheral structure of the earth and its movement, resulting in a lot of other earthquakes, oceanic quakes, mass transfer, lack of stability, then mineral passage in earth, and lot of other various ill consequences and effects. Geomass imbalance. And second thing, all these sand, minerals, and these rock powdered elements are cement, everything is extracted from natural resources. In America, US alone, the annual requirement of concrete is 500 million tons. If you take the whole from construction and the rate of growth of construction requirement and also the widening population, if you have a strategic and statistical study of this thing, over several decades there won't be any mountains or sea sand or sea shore. Totally all the natural resources will be exploited and exhausted. Number three, in the process of making this concrete and other basic byproducts and associative elements, lot of fossil waste fuels are exorbitantly spent. So that exhaust also the fuel availability. And number four, it emits carbon dioxide in high magnitude, which is the leader of the global warming project. Carbon dioxide is the gas which is the leader of the global warming project. 
resulting in ozone repair and other, uh, other unwanted evils, which is nothing but a catastrophe, which is worse than two world wars and two big oceanic earthquakes. Global warming is such a dangerous incident and it is instigated by CO2, which is produced most of the CO2 production is first by automobiles and second by the cement, cement and concrete industry. According to this hazardous and pollution study, it has been told that if it goes like this, in few decades, the total earth, see, constructing your house beautifully and making the earth ugly, it is nonsensical. <laughs> that is going to be the contribution of this concrete science and constructing technology in future, which now everybody is designed to know. So, here, in this concrete, we have lack of materials and alternatives. See, if it is a dry powder, it is cement. If it is with sand and gravel, it is known as concrete. If it is with sand, clay and lime, it is known as... What we apply inside the house is known as plaster. And what we apply outside is known as chaco. And the same thing is wet, with high pressure and mixture and low pressure, high pressure and mixture, wet and dry, it results in short treat and granite. <laughs> then if it is binded with the blocks and bricks, it becomes mortar. If mortar is diluted, that becomes growth. These are the various names like Dasha or Tara <laughs> <laughs> These are the various incarnations of <laughs> the same concrete. And in this process of concrete, they aim for nine major qualities. The five supportive elements for construction is one is water, second is energy, third is capital, fourth is labor, and fifth thing is raw materials. So that type of construction or concrete that results in low requirement of processing water demand, low energy inhibition, low capital outlay, minimal labor, and multi-source of raw material adaptation along with non-toxic in nature, zero volatile in nature, eco-friendly in nature, with the superior and standard sturdy durability is said to be a good construction and the material is to be a good concrete. It is known as Navavidhopaya in Nirmana Shastra. So these nine elements are focused now. Now eco-friendliness, it has also come for rescue now. It is a recent <laughs> intrusion in sectorsites. Whatever you want, it must be eco-friendly. You must not think of your own house or your own street or your own dream. You must think of your globe as your house and you must cater to the needs of global development and symbiosis. So this type of concrete with various types and various qualities, they have resulted in the formation of various other materials which now come for rescuing the opposite hazardous explanations given by the environmental advocates. Recently they have created some Alpha cement binding. There is a binder known as alpha cement binder. There is a recent innovation. And second, silicate based cement and fly ash geopolymer concrete, as well as a glassy, alkaline rich volcanic stuff. These are all the modern things which are considered to be alternative <coughs> to the conventional method of extraction of concrete, based on which now they have resulted in the formation of. Some modern techniques, there are five modern techniques which are there in pursuit. What are the five things? One is to invent and design liquid stone which can bend like a metal, which is as flexible as a metal. So this type of metallic extraction makes the surface thin and light, but still sturdy and capable of bearing the burden of the building. It is constructively more powerful and provincial as well as thin and light to handle. This was exhibited in the National Building Museum of Washington, D.C. It is still now in research. And second thing is the reason for the invention of Agilia and Ductile, the new cements, which are of the brands which deal with the minimal labor as well as 5 to 10 times of most effectiveness as they are blended with additives which are known as super plasticizers. Adhistik Dhagari in Sanskrit. In Sanskrit it is known as Adhistik Dhagari. And in English it is known as technically super plasticizer. Instead of a, a vibrator machine, naturally it has its own auto consulting structure by means of which self-arrangement of its supervision status 
without the essential of the vibration mechanism, which is that to totally squeeze out the bubbles on the surface. That is automatically done by that uh, Achillea machine known to the modern people. These two inventions of cement is now in innovation and most of the people are doing that. And third thing is, for more light absorption and non-heat retention qualities, now translucent invention of concrete was in vogue and still it is in the process. Will Wittig, a famous architect, he designed this translucent, basically transparent and light conducting concrete. But because of its non-sturdy nature, it was a failure, which was then recently designed by the Hungarian architect who designed the Police Academy of Kuwait by its new invention of translucent concrete, which is the not translucent concrete itself in there of Columbia University. What is dream building movement? It is a movement by which all materials utilized are very much conducive to the greenery and eco-friendliness and environmental upgradation. So he had made that and he designed the concrete material from the crushed recycled glass particles with concrete and number two with degraded materials which are treated for detoxification. All dredged materials that are industrial waste and other waste by components, tri components and other residual factors, they are taken for treatment, multi-level treatment to remove the toxins present inside it. And this type of available materials, if they are recycled and processed, the extraction and exploitation of natural resources will be avoided and it will be also eco-friendly. That is taken by the Christian mayor, the architect and construction engineer of Columbia University. Then finally, self-cleaning concrete has been invented by the Italian cementing company of Italy by which they made such a structure of concrete mixed with white pigment of titanium dioxide which naturally absorbs the ultraviolet radiations, retain them, and with those vibrations which will remove the extirpate bacteria, algae, fungi, nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide and other volatile organic compounds even. So these type of various things have been innovatively made in the modern science. But still what I want to say is, there must be a process by which the professional honesty, professional integrity must be maintained. Even though there is a galaxy of learned people, galaxy of committed people, a small number of countable, disharmonious elements harm the integrity, honesty and reputation of the whole society. So we must take all essential steps for doing that. The major fear that human being is dying daily. Before two decades, we were thinking of cyclones, and typhoons, and heavy rain, flood, and drought. Now, the rarest phenomenon of natural disaster, that is earthquake, it has become a repetitive and frequentative phenomenon. Starting from the year 1897, forgetting the global record from 1897 to 1950, we have seen more Incidents, especially four major incidents starting from the Himalayan earthquake till the Assam earthquake of 1897 till the 1950th Himalayan earthquake. And from 1950 to 1991, we have seen a lot of small earthquakes in Uttar Kashi, Bihar, and uh, Jabalpur. We had small earthquakes, which are very infinitesimal in impact. And now, 2001, we have been taught a very good, exhaustive descriptive, elucidative lesson by the Bhuj earthquake at Gujarat, 2001. Under 2004 December, we have been taught about the oceanic quake also possible along with the earthquake. So we have read about these things, whether they are existing or not, that has been a doubt, which is being well clarified by the Mother Earth itself, that it is available for us, possible also, <laughs> and exorbitantly abundant. So the indo gadgetic plains, the western India, the Kutch and the Kutchava regions, are said to be technologically very imbecile in nature. So recently, this fear of earthquake that has resulted in the formation of study of, that is dynamic analysis, <coughs> earthquake analysis, seismographic innovations, disaster detection management and control, disaster scrutiny, materials management, seismographic installation, seismographic instrumentation, seismographic consulting and construction, then methodology of a strong foundation, then material science for uh, seismic effects and their protection methodologies, then uh, seismic zones and their mapping, and seismic coefficients of important towns where there are uh, mass people gathering. See, 
earthquake coming in a different area of farmland is different from the same earthquake coming in a thickly populated, densely populated area. So, these co coefficients of these seismic factors are studied in relation with the towns <laughs> and the lithological map of the earth has been made and the tectonic factors are very much deeply investigated and studied. This awareness has been created by the deeper impact that has been created by earthquake. Now recently we are framing a lot of methodologies for constructing earthquake resistant building designing and structure. So now we have earthquake design, earthquake resistant design, earthquake resist resistant design for various structures like for we are having housing, we are having dams, we are having bridges, we are having industrial constructions and we are having uh, then water retending structures, aqueducts and other water retending structures and there is the earthquake resistance study for earthen buildings, for uh, low strength masonry buildings and buildings which are there with uh, these pre-casted components in flooring and uh, uh, that is a tiling and we are also having a different study of blast resistance with underground blast as well as the explosives. Now recently occurring these abnormalities, they have created a vigilance and awareness not only in the elite society but also the receptorial common society to create buildings. Now we have only awareness about Vastu recently. <laughs> Before that we had awareness about the light, air and other things. Then for certainty, good cement, good way of construction, other things. Now recently they are into the many of Vastu. Now everything must be in the Vastu. Now even the Vastu thing has been totally forgotten or made to forget by means of this earthquake innovation. <laughs> now, blast, underground blast, yeah. explosions, then the natural disasters and intruders, especially with the earthquake. So lot of such things are made. And the recent Institute of Seismographic Research and Studies, they have given five major studies on five various areas and they have derived in five major uh, ideologies or instructions to follow. And let me complete this session and this lecture by saying those five things. Number one, it is awareness. Just as with Vastu and cost effectiveness and economization, you must also be having the awareness. Though without minding the cost or the time taken, without compromising the quality, one must go for a multi poly level resistant building, however small and however it is decently beautiful it may be. Reasonably decently beautiful. The concentration you are giving for these artificial lands, the structures, the marbles and granites, we can pay at least 10 percent for its resistance. Because who is going to enjoy if it is not resistant, it is going to blast it. <laughs> who is going to enjoy the richness and splendor of your house? So awareness must be created in the society. Second thing is very important, accountability. There must be a legal binding with anybody who takes the construction process. See, whatever we may say, there is a one thing which I want to say, which may be totally bitter to the uh, ruling or living generations. Whenever you see, whenever you compromise the value, now recently all the cement manufacturers, they went to the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu and they made a compromise and uh, stabilization, standardization of the cement price. How it is possible, you must improve the technology and you must improve with all additives and modernizations, eh? yet you have to reduce these things. A real, healthy, structural economy is not reducing the prices, increasing the opportunities for people for employment and making them rich enough to increase the ability for them to purchase is real economy. It is not to reduce the price. <laughs> if you are going to create the translucent concrete, or the self-cleaning concrete, or the liquid stone concrete, or the eco-friendly green building concrete, if you are going to import or manufacture here, suddenly it will be twice cost here. That's what it has been told by the All India uh, Cement uh, Production Union, the council chairman he advised. Even if you spend more, there are two facilities. One, it will be strong. Number two, it is cheaper to maintain. You need not go and repair it frequently, just as you are doing Amavasa Dharpana every month. It is not like that. It is very cheaper to maintain. It is eternally glorious. It withstands. It gives you safety. So the main quality, apart from the other elegance, beauty, the mammoths, the structure, and other other disciplines, the best, that is the vertebral column of a construction is safety to the inventors or the trespassers. That is the main quality. So that is that we are going to assure you, and you must not make the price. So even if you are going to invest large at the time of the inception or installation, you are not going to get into recurring expenses because it is going to be sturdy. So this ruling system that must be created vigilance by the collective and integral protest or request or appeal by all of you engineers that 
there must be a standardization of a price of all the materials, not on the basis of uh, the interest or wish of the people. The people will be interested if cement is given in, at free of cost. Even. <laughs> we must not take into interest of people, but welfare of the all around the happiness and prosperity of the society must be considered, by which we have to take into the compatibility as well as the accountability of the people inside. If you are doing, you must do it with proper measures and scales. If you are not doing, you must be accountable for legal punishment. The third thing is competence. One must be having competence. I am sorry to say that most of the people are competent. Why we must say about competence? If they are given for a small budget, if they are demarcated within the bars of a limited execution, then they cannot do justice and they have to compromise, uh, compromise in the quality of the things that they use which unwarrantedly results in debilitation of the structure, resulting in all levels. So competency of proper people, not only competency, competency is not only your capability to construct, it is your honesty to construct it as per norms, that is also a competency. Then fourth thing is research, fourth thing is research and analysis. And the fifth thing, the final thing is internal enforcement, the local municipal must enforce they must see, supervise, vigilantly observe, meticulously follow whether the norms are very clearly, concretely followed or not. So, the first thing is awareness in the society. Second thing is competence of the people. Third thing is accountability for failures. Fourth thing is integral enforcement of rules and principles. Fifth thing is research analysis. Let us create a world in which everybody lives with safety and security and that is in the hands of people like you. Let you spread the message. I wish and bless all of you to have a concrete development in construction sites and constructive development in concrete technology. <laughs>
they are not having patience for anything to get into the process of uh, the natural course. Nobody is having the patience. Immediately they want things. Even in uh, uh, what we call the genetic tailoring, just as you give your clothes as per your design for the tailor, and then you ask him the same thing for the uh, express tailoring within uh, 12 hours, the emergent tailor 24 hours, then two days the normal tailoring. Even in the future they used to ask about the progeny, their own progeny, for within uh, two days or three days or four days, without having the patients to recover. So this process of bacterial concrete that existed, while lime was very much used with the sand and clay in our western years, as it is time consuming in most of the constructions, especially in the construction of the temples of uh, the Brigadishwara temple, it is the lime that is calcinated with the bacterial fermentation only, that existed and still exists. The only thing is, a yeah, time saving, there are two things, the hindering factors. One, storage facility, it requires a huge storage facility. Number two, it requires its own uh, time, it consumes voracious time for the process. If those two things are uh, totally either minimized or totally they are uh, subjected to reconciliation, such a technology will increase uh, the sturdity of the building many multiple times. Half an hour per day, and this is six months, you can sit here and talk. 